Hey, my name is Craig Christofferson. Welcome to Let the Light In TV. Today, we have the Mars 400S Pro, which is currently retailing for 650 US dollars, or that's about 830 Canadian. So let's jump straight into things. How do you get this set up? It's actually extremely easy. First of all, you're gonna mount uh, the transmitter onto your camera. Now, just, I'm gonna throw up a picture here. There is a potentiality, depending on your camera body, that because of the design, of the transmitter, it could potentially rest on some of your camera controls. So if this is a camera that you're going to be adjusting a bunch of things on the whole time, um, then maybe that might be an annoyance to you, um, but depending on your camera body, it may or may not rest on your controls, but you can always just you know, flip it around as well. Next up, you need to be powering it. So you have a battery option. That's gonna be an L-Series, Sony L-Series battery. You have a DCI cable as well, or there's also a USB-C port. So if you have a USB-C cable, you wanna plug it into a battery pack, then that is available to you as well. As far as video cable options, you have an HDMI port and an SDI cable. So depending on your range of camera, it's there, the options are there to suit your needs. So you plug that into your camera, you turn on the transmitter, and then you are ready to go. And actually, the really big selling point behind the Mars 400 uh, S Pro, I believe, is the availability of video monitoring. So one transmitter can send signal to two different receivers. Or, and here's the big selling point I really think, one transmitter can send the signal up to four different devices. And to me, this is huge because you only need the transmitter set up. You don't need the receiver set up to do this. So transmitter set up four different smart devices. That's four different Apple or uh, Android phones, depending on whatever you wanna do there. To me, this is huge because I remember in college setting up lighting and you would have your camera set up and then you would go and you would adjust your lights and then you'd run back to the viewfinder. Does it look good? Adjust some camera settings, run back to the lighting, fix things around. And it was just like 10 minutes of wasted time. So with the Mars 400S Pro, right? You get some video monitoring on your phone. You don't have to run around anymore. You have your subject stay seated as you set up the lighting or set up your shot or framing or whatever you wanna do. And you don't have to run back and forth to the viewfinder, which depending on the set that you're running, maybe your director of photography and, and director of the whole shoot are there trying to get things figured out by that themselves. So this can really help speed up your work process, I believe. Before we get in a little too far, let's hop over to Dustin and take a look at the specifications of this device. So my part of the review today is I'm gonna give you a little bit closer look of the actual monitor pieces and receiver. And so as you can see here, I just have a quick configuration that shows how that you can use it to transmit to a monitor. So let's just quickly go over some of those options that you have. So you can wirelessly transmit to an external monitor, for example, for a client or even for yourself. Uh, it might be useful to myself, for example, if I had a monitor uh, that was just slightly off camera you know, and so that I could actually look to see the feed of what's going on. One application for that, and then as Craig has already noted, you have great options of transmitting to um, a mobile device, which really kind of eliminates the need, even less so if all you need is monitoring, and it eliminates the need for some of the cables and just really simplifies the workflow. And I really like that clean aspect of the design. But let's jump in a little bit closer and look at what's actually in the box, uh, what you have to work with, what you're going to need to flesh out your kit. So let's take a closer look at the receivers itself, talk about what you're getting in the box. So you get both the transmitter and the receiver. It's easy to distinguish between the two because of a color coding. There is a red cold shoe tightening uh, lug here on the transmitter and a blue colored one on the receiver. So a quick and easy visual way to distinguish them. So in the box, uh, you get you get both of these transmitters, you get a DC adapter, you get a total of four different antennae, which you can use, um, or excuse me, five. There's an additional one that comes just kind of as a backup uh, for that. And so you do have some of the basic things, but what you're not gonna get in the box is any kind of uh, battery. You're, if you wanna use, uh, connect HDMI or SDI to something else, you're gonna have to supply your own cables. And then as we'll get to in just a moment with the receiver, if you want to uh, go into uh, to, for live streaming and output from that, you're also going to need some additional cabling for that. 
So just a little heads up that there are a few different di different things you're going to need depending on your application. Though the cool thing about the uh, transmitter here is that you can truly transmit wirelessly and use Wi-Fi depending on if you're using a smart device for a receiver. So it could be mean that you, you need far less of that, though you're still going to have to get a signal from your camera into the actual transmitter itself. Now these are, even though they're made of good quality materials, I uh, this feels more like engineered plastics on the outside, but this feels like a milled aluminum when it comes to the tightening. Overall, everything feels you know nicely made and it feels relatively sturdy. The weight is at 206 grams for both the transmitter and the receiver, and so you know definitely not going to have any issues when it comes to weight. Now, you are fairly limited in the way that you can mount this. There is a cold shoe as noted. It's also threaded for quarter inch at the bottom. And so this really is kind of designed around, you know, mounting on the top of say a camera because you don't have any other mounting positions on here. As far as powering the device, you have a number of different options. First of all, it does come with a DC adapter, though I will note that that DC adapter, there's only one of them that's included, so you're only powering one of these. And if you're trying to uh, simplify the number of cables and everything, you're probably going to want to go to another option, say a L-series battery, which you can click onto the back. That's probably my preferred way of going. And uh, as far as the actual usage here, the uh, transmitter burns a little bit more power than what does the receiver. And so if you're using the same size battery on both of them, expect the transmitter, probably the battery to die first. However, it is worth noting that it is hot swappable. And so if you note that you're getting towards the end of your battery life, you can switch to some other power source, um, including the DC, or you also have an option here with the USB port that you can charge from uh, power delivery, um, either a battery pack or a plug. And so you do have a couple of other options there. And so I, I really appreciate the fact that they're giving you plenty of powering options to make sure that you can get uninterrupted flow in your chute. Now, as far as our actual connectivity here, you've got basically three, three, maybe four options, depending on what your application is. So you've got a full-size HDMI. Uh, with most applications for something like this at this level product, you're probably going to be working with a mirrorless type camera, and so HDMI is going to be the method that you use. But it does have SDI, and so if you're a little bit more dedicated, you're using a cine level camera, uh, SDI is going to be the preferred because of the lower latency involved in that. But you also, as noted, have the option of using Wi-Fi if your you know, purpose here is just monitoring and a little bit less transmitting a signal. And as noted with the receiver, if you are doing live stream and you connect out via the USB-C, which you will need an adapter as a part of that that Craig will demonstrate, that you are, you are able to transmit that way. And the nice thing about this is that you actually eliminate the need for a video capture card when you use this method. And so it actually can save you some money there in that you're eliminating a necessary component that a lot of people have to use or purchase for live stream. And those uh, capture cards uh, can, can run anywhere from $200 up. And so that's a nice little bit of savings there. The other basic thing here on the back is an on off switch and I will note that it's just kind of a toggle type switch and so depressed is in the on position and uh, then when you click it back up it is in the off position. Now I, I don't love this position or the design of this first of all in that if you are got an HDMI cable here it's already a tight space to work in in this position and then the nature of that toggling position is that it actually becomes almost countersunk and it's very difficult to access um, if you actually have all the cables in place you know maybe you're in an awkward position in terms of the mounting capabilities. Coming around up front, a few things to note here. We do have an OLED. It is nice and bright. Uh, doesn't wash out easily. But the actual menu functionality as we dive into the menu itself, it is pretty old school with a low refresh rate, as you can see, and graphics that aren't exactly going to make you think 2021. The positive thing, however, is that the, you know, the various controls are pretty straightforward. And here, I'm, for example, I'm in the control for the fan. I will note that there is a fan. There are some passive sinks, but there's also a fan here. Fortunately, it is very quiet in operation. And if you're working in a cool environment, you do have the option to turn it right off if, you're, if sound is actually a concern. I suspect for most people that the sound is not going to be a concern. It is very, very quiet.
You do have some options also about the latency and so you can go for highest quality of picture. You can try to speed up and lower the latency by choosing that mode or you can go to a balance mode that is in between there. A lot of basic functions here, it gets the job done and as noted you have some control over Wi-Fi and the ability to transmit uh, via that which in some ways is the most, I think one of the most interesting applications here. So overall what we have is a nicely configured little device. It's doesn't take up a lot of room in this position obviously compared to their older style which were mounted vertically this is going to take up probably less of a footprint on top of your camera which just gives you a little bit more flexibility of seeing over the top of it and so I do like some of the physical improvements that we have got here to the system and as Craig is going to demonstrate it works quite well Okay, so next let's dive into the companion Hollyview app. This is something that I believe is going to be an extremely strong selling point for this product. And so let's go through the different functions here that we have. We have our histogram option, which we can do right there. We have our focus. So our focus initially, it brings up just quite a faint line, but luckily there is customization so we can adjust the threshold and how much it is showing. We can also adjust our colors here so we can put kind of that classic, uh, what I have on my peaking setting here on the Sony Alpha 6500 is I have this red peaking so I make no mistake about what is in focus and so that's customizable to different colors there and you can uh, customize your threshold to be extremely light or I kind of like it more around here where I really see what's in focus. Next up, you have your zebras function. And so zebras is at 50% right now. And so typically we kind of want that up, maybe something more about 85% to only show the really bright highlights, but again, very customizable. Next up, we have framing. So framing, if we tap and hold here, we have a bunch of different sizes that we can make this frame. We can make it different colors as well. We can make it a different transparency. You know, sometimes that's a little bit too dark. We make it a little bit lighter. We can change uh, the cross within the middle to a dot, and then we can resize it here and adjust what we deem is going to be our safe space. Next up, actually, let's take the, <laughs> the zebras off. We have magnify. So we can zoom in and check a little bit closer, but then we can also resize how big of a portion we want to resize and also our outline. Next up, we have false color. So if we tap that, that gives us false color. And if we hold down, then it gives us kind of how much is in each bit of the range there. Then we have mono color and we can change that blue, gray, green, or even just off within that. And so that's our mono color function. Next up, we have our 3D LUT. And so it gives you kind of a little bit of a, a preset there, which is honestly not looking too great, but let's turn it back on. And if we hold down, then that we can see that is Canon C-Log, Canon C-Log 2, Sony S-Log. And so if you're shooting in one of these types of profiles, you can see already the end result before you even bring it into post. <laughs> let's take it off of that filter very quick. And then finally, we just have the flip function, which we can do both vertical and horizontal. So we also have the option on the right hand side of the app to take some photos and take some screenshots. Uh, we can adjust the volume, the brightness there. You can see our uh, audio monitoring up in the top left so you can get your audio levels and then you can also screen record here and save that to your phones or iPads device library. And finally, if we don't want this person to have uh, any control at all, what we can do is simply lock the phone and now we are not in control of anything and we are just using it as a video monitor. So if you have somebody uh, on your shoot, you have a client on your shoot and they want you want to have them involved within the shoot and have them be able to monitor and, and see what's going on, then you can just lock their device off and you can just let them take a look at what's going on on set. So the app I believe is an extremely big selling point for the Mars 400S Pro. This is massive, I believe, for your set and for your crew. The ability for each of your crew members to go in and have all these different options feeding off of your camera. And so you can have you know, your lighting director going and setting up lighting. Meanwhile, your director and director of photography are here um, at the camera. 
going over their settings and their shots and everybody can be involved without peeking over everybody else's shoulder. This I believe is really going to speed up your lighting process and not to mention even if you are just a solo uh, work crew, well the fact that I can sit here and say okay well what was my lighting at, what can I change, you know, is something in my background here, is, am I is it in a safe space, do I have good headroom, the fact that I can do all that just sitting here in the shot really helps me out as well. Now, Hollyland are claiming that there's a 0.1 second delay between the transmission and reception of that signal. So, as far as live streaming goes, let's test this out. What I'm going to do is currently the transmitter is on balanced mode. So, it's balancing picture quality with speed of transmission. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I've started that record. Uh, of the screen here on the iPad and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync these two things up and I'm going to show you this iPad feed here and what we're going to see is I'm going to keep the delay in and we're going to see is it achievable is it okay of a feed to live stream with okay so this is on a balanced mode right now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to switch it next to speed mode Okay, so we are on speed now, and this is the transmission mode. This is the delay that you will experience in audio and the quality that you will experience in video. Finally, let's go to our HD mode. Okay, so this is the delay in HD. This is the picture quality in HD and reception. So as you can see there, the audio and video are desynced, but don't let that freak you out too much because there are tutorials online, I've watched through them, that you can sync the audio and video back together if that's something that you're looking to do. So if you're comfortable with that process, then there is a solution for that. And I would go ahead and check that out. So if you would like to purchase the Mars 400S Pro, the links are down below in the description. They will bring you to where you need to go. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe, give it a thumbs up. I'd love to see what you think about the Mars 400S Pro, what you want to see in the future. I hope you have a great day and remember to let the light in.